The stock market ended on a low note on Friday, and it pretty much booked a negative week for this past week. That's two negative weeks in a row. It's what I expected. I expected the market was going to begin to sell off and really give up some of those gains that we've had for five consecutive months and really a really positive market over the last 16 to 18 months. Now, a couple of things are weighing on the market and creating more fear, therefore more selling in the coming week. Heading into the weekend, we had inflation that showed it was going up. That's going to cause the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates higher for longer. In fact, some investors were expecting rate cuts. A rate cut or two may still happen in 2024, but just the job to cut rates has become more difficult for the Fed. The other factor is stocks are just too expensive. Let's face it, some of these stocks, it's great to see uh, the likes of Meta up more than 400% since its low point in late 2022. That's phenomenal. NVIDIA is just on a tremendous march upward and has basically gone parabolic. It's really fun to see that, but that's just unsustainable to expect that, hey, the market's just going to keep doing that. Unsustainable. Prices get way too expensive, and at some point, investors cash in. Remember that most investors are investing for a reason. In my case, I invest so that when I retire, I have a really comfortable retirement that I can help my kids and so forth. Once I get to a certain age, I'm going to be going more into really conservative investments like bonds, income stocks, and other types of really low risk investments and get away from really high growth stocks. I think high growth stocks will always be part of, will always be part of my portfolio, but to a lesser extent. And that's what causes investors to sell off. So it's not a big you know, causal factor that's happening. It's just the natural motion of investors through their lifetime. So it's understandable that investors will want to sell at a high point. Now, those are the factors going into the weekend. Now, during the weekend, Iran pretty much attacked Israel. And that was just really sad to see to begin with. You know, I just hate wars. I hate the war that's happening in Israel with Hamas. And now Iran has escalated it by sending a drone strike. At the end of the day, wars hurt people, people die, and that's just tragic. I wish they didn't happen. And this war in particular is affecting commodity markets like oil. Oil prices are really going up. They were already going up for a couple of weeks, and now there's going to be another big reason for oil prices to go up. As oil prices go up, that puts a lot of pressure on the economy. If people are paying more to gas up their car, they're going to pay less to go to the movies. They're going to pay less on discretionary items at the shopping center. It really affects the economy and certain sectors will suffer with high oil prices. It's also a combination where when you have oil prices, you tend to have recessions. Recessions oftentimes are caused by high oil prices, which is interesting. And as oil price uh, approaches $100 per barrel, just a lot of pressure on inflation upward. And that again is the wrong direction we wanna be going in with regards to inflation. So that war during the week and the news of that war was big. And I think the war news is really going to affect trading this week. It's going to put more fear into the market. Investors are going to be more scared to invest. I want to buy stocks when the market's really scared, when it's selling off, when it's selling off, not for fundamental reasons, but for emotional reasons. This week may just be a big fire sale that investors just want to get out. They want to wait until you know this conflict in Israel is over. They want to wait until oil prices come down. They want to wait until things are a little easier and more predictable. And that's not the investing I do. I'm a value investor. I like buying companies that are undesirable today because for whatever reason, but they have great fundamentals. They produce really good cash flows. They're growing, they're profitable. They have a good management team. It's a good company, it's a good business. All those things are in place. It's just not a popular stock at this moment. But over time, those fundamentals will cause that company to be more valuable and I'll be rewarded with appreciation. So I wanted to go over how I'm gonna approach this week. I like doing my homework on the weekends and being prepared to buy on dips. You know, being prepared is the way that you can make uh, really quick decisions on a particular day. I expect some days this week are gonna be pretty good sell-off days like we saw on Friday. And I'm ready to pull the trigger on a list of stocks that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna explain why I like the stock and the reasons why I would be pulling the trigger on buying more shares of those stocks this coming week. Here are the stocks that I am ready to pull the trigger on this week if they are discounted further than where they're at today. Just to give you a sense of what I'm looking at is I've got the symbol of the company in this column, the industry, 
the dividend they're paying, most importantly, what discount I believe the company is currently trading at, and obviously the action to buy if I see any dips on these stocks. The first company that I'm ready to pull the trigger on is Zim Integrated Shipping. And this is a high risk company. Shipping rates go up and down. And more recently, they've been going up. I think shipping rates are gonna continue to go up in the Europe uh, waters since you have more conflict in Israel. More, higher shipping rates are just gonna cause the revenues for Zim to go up. It's also gonna cause you know global supply chains to have to readjust. And that is gonna increase the revenues for Zim. It's gonna be positive. And I think that that stock price is gonna benefit. The next stock is 3M. This is a highly respected company that's really been putting things together, back together as they should be. This is a great company for many decades, pays a really nice dividend, a 6.57. I think they're really discounted by 75%. Now that they have some of these lawsuits behind them and they've kind of controlled and contained the issues around those lawsuits, this stock is in really good, really good position. And I continue to buy into 3M. If I see a dip this week, I'm gonna be buying more shares. The next stock is CVS. I'm very optimistic and bullish about healthcare. It was left behind in 2023. It's somewhat being left behind in 2024, but this is a great industry. We need healthcare. People get sick, they need medicines, they need medical services, they need insurance. And CBS, for some reason, has just not rallied a whole lot over the last year and a half. I'd like to take advantage of that. Again, I'm a value investor. I look at how much value a company has. I weigh the fundamentals like free cash flow, earnings per share. And on both factors, CBS is doing great. In fact, their earnings are always, you know, they, they surprise to the upside. They're more profitable than expected. Their free cash flows are really good. So I'm gonna keep buying shares of CDS. The next company I'm ready to pull the trigger on is Cigna. Cigna is really profitable, growing really well. They were trying to acquire Humana and that acquisition didn't happen. Investors love that news. I think Humana is really struggling if you look at their financials and fundamentals. Cigna alone will continue to grow and I view them as, as the best uh, healthcare payer stock out there. And that's saying that I've ranked these guys above United Healthcare and even Elevance. Uh, so I continue to buy shares in Cigna. Next one is a real estate investment trust by the name of Vici. Vici owns a lot of hotels and casinos. You could recognize Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Mandalay Bay. Um, these are really premium properties in Vegas, but they also own other properties throughout the US that are gaming properties. And needless to say, People are really traveling because they were cooped up for a couple of years due to COVID and it hasn't stopped. Just travel is, is really off the charts. And these casinos are doing great. These destinations are doing great. So the landlord is also gonna do great. That's my belief and that's why I'm buying into Beachy. Zoom has been growing. They're a solid 10% grower in technology. They continue to show that they're profitable, generate great free cash flow. Their balance sheet is phenomenal. So I continue to buy into this smaller mid-sized cap technology company. At some point, I believe that Zoom's gonna be acquired. There's just too much value there. So I could see one of the big giant technology companies want to take over Zoom because they have such a broad and strong client base, especially with businesses that are now depending on Zoom for their people to conduct operations, to meet with customers, to really get the business done that needs to be taken care of. So I'm really bullish on Zoom and continue to buy shares. If shares dip this week, I'm a buyer. The next company I'm ready to buy is Baba, Alibaba. This company is a good company in China. They resemble Amazon profitable. They have the right businesses. They have a great cloud business. They're growing their e-commerce business. And it's my one Chinese stock, pure play Chinese stock. And I really like that from a diversification perspective. And I think at some point, the value of Alibaba is gonna be taken into account and the stock is gonna rally. Intel is the next stock and Intel was discounted recently. There was some bad news, stock fell. I analyzed the company and realized, hey, this company is discounted and I'd like to buy into Intel. I did really well with Broadcom. I bought Broadcom when it dipped and I made a very good gain and I sold Broadcom. Now I'm looking for another semiconductor company to grow my semiconductor position and Intel is that right company. If I see it discounted this week, I'm a buyer of Intel. Adobe also dropped significantly on some bad news. Adobe is a great company and they're number one in their category of software. So I'm a buyer of Adobe because A, I've made money on Adobe over the, over the years. I buy when it's low and I thought they were overpriced. So I sold uh, similar to the Broadcom story I just uh, shared. 
made some good money, and now it's time to make some more money on Adobe. Buy it, hold it for a while, maybe hold it forever, and uh, really appreciate and take advantage of a discounted price in Adobe. Next company is a materials company that's really tied to farming and food production, and that's CF Industries. They produce fertilizers, and we need food, period. We need these fertilizers in order for farmers to grow the crops that we need. So CF Industries is a solid company that's going to be in demand, and I believe they're really discounted. Now that we have higher oil prices, the price of these fertilizers is going to go up, and we're going to see that CF Industry revenues are also going to grow up. Medical Properties Trust is the next stock I'm ready to buy, and this is a high-risk stock. This stock has been shorted by many investors, but there's bad news for those short sellers because there's been good news with MPW. A couple of things. One is one of their main tenants uh, that's in trouble, that's caused a lot of the turmoil for MPW. They decided to sell a good part of their business over to United Healthcare. Therefore, that business is going to have to lease United Healthcare. will have to lease those properties from MPW. So very quickly, the tenant risk goes down because it's being transferred from a high risk tenant to a very low risk tenant in United Healthcare. Second, they just announced this week that MPW will pay a dividend. The companies only pay dividends if they could afford it, especially a REIT. Therefore, it shows that the company is operating with enough cash and enough cash flow. If you have enough cash and in, in a good balance sheet, you could be around forever. And I think that MPW is really discounted by the short sellers and everybody else who believes they're gonna go out of business. If MPW does not go out of business, this stock's really gonna rally and I continue to buy shares in MPW. The next stock is Allstate. Allstate's been really working for me. This is a stock I picked up. I thought that they were gonna really put their business back together in a good way, which did happen. I'm up on the stock really well and continue to buy shares because you know this is a recipe that's really working. If you read into the inflation reports, car insurance is really high. Reason for it is car prices have increased and hey, if you wreck a car now, insurance companies have to pay more. Well, it's time to pay the piper if you're a car driver and need to insure it and you have to pay higher insurance rates. That means that Allstate will charge more, make more revenues, have more money in their hands for them to invest and make money on. So I'm bullish on Allstate and we'll be buying shares on pullbacks. PayPal is beginning to work. Now this is a stock that for about a year's time has been, in, there's been a lot of doubters of PayPal, but there's been a lot of value that I see in this company. And the company continues to grow, continues to show profit, and now it's beginning to rally if you look at the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to keep buying shares in PayPal because it is a good value stock for me. Nike is a recent stock that I've been buying into, and it really follows a big drop in the stock price. This is Nike, the number one shoe apparel company on the planet. You cannot say Nike without thinking of all the athletes and all the people that endorse Nike. Just a tremendous company. and I'll be glad to buy more shares if there's any dip on Nike this week. U.S. Bank and Citigroup, I'll cover it together. The reason I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna buy shares in banks and financial services is this particular sector and industry were really discounted in 23 from the big bank scare. And they've performed really well for me. I bought at the right time. I bought into U.S. Bank and Citi. They are continuing to perform well and the market's not recognizing the value there. For example, on Friday, Citigroup announced earnings. They were really good earnings, but the stock went down. It's like, huh, the same company the prior week was trading at a certain price. They announced earnings and said, hey, we're making more money than we thought. We're making more of everything that an investor wants and the stock goes down. I will gladly buy shares in companies like that. Both US Bank and Citigroup, in my opinion, are discounted. So I'm gonna keep buying them into my portfolio. And the last one is Comcast. Comcast has been a winner for me. I bought at the right time, sold at the right time. I bought the stock, owned it, sold it before it started to really go down. For some reason, Comcast stock has been dropping. This is a solid dividend payer that's been growing their dividend, well operated. Everything you see around Disney that's going wrong, Comcast did right. So it's just an exceptional company that I really like. So I don't own any shares, but I'm ready to buy some Comcast and start building a position in that company. So if you watch my videos, a couple weeks ago, you saw me or heard me announce that I was gonna be selling some of my stocks to create some cash that I expected that the market was gonna to begin to sell off, that stock prices were just too high. And I wanted more cash so that the inevitable drop, when it happened, I was in a position where I had enough capital to buy shares. Well, the market's beginning to drop. We'll see how much it drops. But now I have enough cash to buy into the companies that I believe are really discounted and are gonna be really worth having. Uh, more shares in my portfolio. 
And that's what I like doing as a value investor. I'm an active value investor. I'm not a buy a stock, wait 10 years to see if it worked. No, that's just, I've worked too hard for my money. I'd rather buy a stock, analyze it a couple of times a quarter, make sure I still understand their business and their business strategy. I believe their management's doing a great job. They're not doing anything dumb and, and uh, destructive to their share price. And then decide if I'm gonna hold it or I'm gonna buy more shares or maybe even sell it. Decide if, hey, now they're overvalued by too much and I sell it. I made a lot of money on Amazon and I sold it recently. So that's my video on my plan. As we head into this week, I think there is gonna be a fire sale potential here this week where stock prices are really gonna get dropped. And it's a great time for me to buy more shares from my portfolio at really discounted prices. I hope you enjoyed the video and I really appreciate you watching.